Lords, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome to the Paddy Power Political Book Awards 2014. Please put your hands together for your host this evening, Mr. Giles Brandreth. Well, it's a look, isn't it? And the joy, ladies and gentlemen, is this. You may take off your glasses and you'll find that I am also still 3D. <laughs> that is the miracle of humanity. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, my lords, fellow 40% taxpayers, <laughs> aspiring 40% taxpayers. <laughs> it's fun for you people to be getting out for a change. Well done, welcome. We hope you enjoy your evening and the drinks. Uh, Thank you for that very warm and generous welcome. As uh, some of you may know, I I'm relieved by the warmth of the welcome because normally nowadays I work for the BBC uh, so that most of my friends have been arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, looking along the guest list for this evening, I realize too that quite a few of your friends have been arrested. <laughs> so it's one of those evenings, isn't it? And I'm actually uh, tagged myself but that is entirely for domestic reasons. <laughs> if, ladies and gentlemen, if you are wondering why I am here again tonight, if you're wondering why I am once more hosting this event, then already we have something in common. Um, <laughs> I, I think the reason that I am here is that I am sort of failure made manifest, and, and I am here, as it were, to make you feel good about yourselves because uh, you are political winners and I am a political loser. Um, some, no, no, I accept it. Uh, some of you may have felt rejection in your lives. Indeed, some of you are going to feel rejection during the next 50 minutes. <laughs> but I do assure you it is probably nothing as to what I felt on the day in 1997 when 182,713 people got up with the self-same object in mind. Get this bugger out. They say you shouldn't take it personally, but somehow you do, as you'll be discovering in 50 minutes or so when you have not won the prize you hope to win. Uh, I, I have to say that in 1997, when the general election came, I knew that I had contempt for my constituents. Um, but it came as a bit of a shock to the system to find the feeling was entirely mutual. <laughs> In fact, during the election campaign, my darling wife, she actually put our house in the constituency up for sale. I said, dear, this isn't sending out quite the right signal. She said, the signal is immaterial, Giles. These people don't like you. They really don't like you. And she was spot on. There's no vapid optimism with my wife, I can tell you that. As my wife says to me, Giles, with you, when one door closes, it's shut. <laughs> Now, for you people tonight, the door will open on an evening of excitement and opportunity. These are extraordinary awards, and what's going to happen is we have ten awards. As you'll find, if you've been to this ceremony before, the first hour goes quite swimmingly. Uh, inevitably, there's a bit of a low during hour two, uh, but then the third hour, when Lord Ashcroft appears, the fireworks start, we begin to get a little bit buzzy again. So just bear with us as the evening goes on. It, it's a slightly challenging evening. I, I don't really know who thought of it. Well, I do know who thought of it. Ian Dale, um, a friend of mine. And um, Ian thought of this idea. And it's a good idea because everybody arrives optimistic and full of hope. But as the hour wears on, gradually more and more of you will realize that you are here under a misapprehension. Uh, you were never in uh, with a prayer at winning. <laughs> but they just needed half a dozen people to fill up the shortlists. Uh, and so some of you will be absolutely really disappointed by the end of the night because you might think this is going to be your evening. It isn't. So really what I'm trying to say is what's going to happen is this. I will uh, introduce each of the categories. Then there will be a very special guest presenter coming on who will read out the shortlist. If your book appears in the shortlist, that is the moment at which to go berserk <laughs> because you may not hear your name or the title again <laughs> until, of course, it is remained it. Um, <laughs> and you then buy them at a very good price uh, and can then flog them when you're doing a, a touring show uh, as I am doing myself at the moment. 
so that's, that's the idea. And uh, if you are the lucky recipient, come up onto the stage. A photograph will be taken. Um, stand quite still for the photograph. Maybe go up on tippy toes. You'll find it makes the tummy go in, chin go out, shoulders come down. You'll look like a winner. Uh, then um, would you just return to your seat? Uh, no speeches. We're not interested. Uh, <laughs> that is actually not, not the case. We are, of course, we're interested. If you want to say a very few words, do come along, but no sort of Kate Winslet type sobbing, just sort of uh, something nice and, and beefy and then get back into position, okay? <laughs> Remembering that everybody, I mean, it's nice for you to have won and for your publisher uh, and for your agent. Uh, it's nice for, for, for them, but for everybody else in the room, it's slightly disconcerting because it means this is a moment when they haven't won. So the people will be applauding, but actually not liking you at all. Uh, <laughs> so it's quite an interesting evening for political people to be involved in, isn't it? One where you are being applauded but despised at the same time. <laughs> so, here we are. It's an exciting night for all of us. I'm thrilled and honoured to be here. It's going to be quite a bit easier for me than for you tonight because I'm on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, Class A, I am a Conservative. <laughs> Let's... Let's get the ball rolling and see how it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to begin with the polemic of the year. And uh, uh, this is an interesting uh, category. Um, and uh, let me tell you who the judges were. Oh, because these are all legitimate awards. That's what's unusual about these awards. Mostly, uh, no, no, I go to a lot of award ceremonies. The last one I attended was the funeral director of the year awards. Uh, well, quite a big gig in my calendar, actually. Uh, the, the big prize that night was for thinking outside the box. Uh, and normally the awards are sponsored by a magazine of some kind, and whoever advertises most during the year gets the prize. Uh, that's not the way this is run at all. These are legitimate, genuinely awards. Proper judges have actually read the books and assessed them, and so if you've won tonight, you can feel very good about it indeed. So let me tell you, first of all, who the judges are in this first category, Polemic of the Year. Yasmin Alibi Brown, Mark Darcy, Nick Dubois MP, Isabel Hardman, and James O'Brien. Hey, it's got a sexy start, isn't it? Hey, so here we are. Uh, and to present this award, we've got somebody quite special. Oh, yes, a classicist, the author of Rubicon and Persian Fire. Would you please salute our Dutch treat? It's Tom Holland. <laughs> So, polemics, they are, of course, as ancient as the classical world, and probably the greatest polemic of all time was directed by Cicero at Mark Antony. Now, Cicero ended up with his head chopped off, his hands severed and nailed up in the forum, and his tongue skewered by hairpins. Today, you might win a prize. And the nominees are... What Should We Tell Our Daughters, by Melissa Benn, published by John Murray. The Necessity of Poverty, by John Bird, published by Quartet Books. The Last Vote, by Philip Coggan, published by Alan Lane. The British Dream, by David Goodhart, published by Atlantic Books. How We Invented Freedom and Why It Matters, by Daniel Hannan. Published by Head of Zeus. What Has Nature Ever Done for Us? By Tony Juniper. Published by Profile Books. And the winner is Daniel Hannon for oh, How We Invented Freedom brilliant. and Why brilliant. It Matters. Brilliant. Nice awards, aren't they? We give him the award and then we take it off. It's terribly nice to be asked anywhere as a member of the European Parliament. We don't normally get asked out much. We're not the most popular people in Europe and don't 
all feel you've got to rush forward and contradict me when I say that. I've, I've got used to this over the years. But while I'm here, I want to thank two people who are here tonight. Uh, it's not often that you can say that your publisher is one of your oldest friends. But Nick Cheatham of Head of Zeus has been my friend for 25 years. Thank you to him uh, for publishing the book. And thank you to my wife, Sarah, who is also here and who has been immensely patient with me while I've been uh, dwelling mentally in the civil and religious wars of the 17th century. In those days, we had to go through war and revolution to establish the sublime right that laws should not be passed nor taxes raised except by our own elected representatives. Today, as I hope, we'll do it with a simple referendum. Thank you. Brilliant. Gracious and political at the same time and, and looking like the young Bruce Willis as well. Marvellous. <laughs> It's clearly an erotic charge in the room tonight. <laughs> and the fellow who presented the prize, I mean, it was wonderful that we managed to spring him from the Ecuadorian embassy for the evening. <laughs> uh, 